right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. I apologize. I was out of town over this last weekend. I wasn't able to get a Monday double feature up. No big deal. I was out of town. I was up in Eugene, Oregon at the Oregon Vape Festival. We're going to talk about that just a little bit. It was a very, very, very fun event. Met some, uh, met some very, very cool, cool people up there, and it was great. It was a great event, but like I said, I didn't have time to shoot a double feature. No big deal. How does the camera look? I'm still uh, adjusting, you know, like I said, to my new surroundings, and I've kind of moved the camera a little bit. I got a little bit more room here. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know how the video looks. Let me know how the audio looks. Let me know how my lighting looks. Let me know how everything looks. Uh, but it's not about any of that. What it's about today is a vlog. And I love shooting vlogs. I love, I love, I look forward to shooting these every single time. Um, I do have a, uh, you know, something thought out in my head. I have no vlog notes to go off of, but that's oh. Okay, we're going to start off the top of this show with beer, of course. That's what we're going to talk about first is beer. After that, we're going to do some shout outs. After that, we're going to do some first impressions. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Oregon Vape Festival, which was a really, really good time. Um, we're going to do some retro vaping. And oh, I got a great, great, great retro vaping segment. Uh, I'm really stoked. I had to dig through a F ton, F ton. We're all adults here. I had to dig through a fuck ton of boxes to find this device for the uh, for the retro vaping. Hopefully we can throw some viewer mail in there. I don't think I'm going to get to fit any music in there, but you know what? No harm, no foul. So let's move forward. And of course, first is beer. And this beer came to me via a subscriber named Brian. Uh, he wanted to get me some beer. This is uh, evidently one of his... <laughs> Mo whoops one of his most most favorite beers i'm going to be drinking out of this uh silly cup that i bought uh i got uh i didn't buy it i got a set of beer cups and there's two like tulip glasses this one crazy looking one i'll have to use the crazy one next week and then this it's kind of like a pilsner style uh, cup, I guess but the beer comes from three floyd's brewery and this is the arctic panzer wolf Arctic Panzer Wolf. Brian sent me some Arctic Panzer Wolf. It's an Imperial IPA. It says Imperial India Pale Ale on there. Uh, that logo and shit is rad. I just like stuff that looks like metal and evil and evil shit like that. And I think that looks super cool. Arctic Panzer Wolf. Could, it looks like a cover of like a power metal album. Um, let me find my bottle opener thankfully there's no cork ah. thankfully there's no cork this week because corks scare me they just do uh i got made fun of a lot for uh for being scared of the cork people people made fun of me especially ruby Roo. she made fun of me Smells like an IPA. Uh, I have a feeling, you know what? Three Floyds is a great brewery, and I've really, really enjoyed most everything that they've put out. Um, I haven't, I'm not a huge IPA fan. Um, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not a huge IPA fan, but if a beer is good, then it's good, regardless of what it is. I've had really, really good, like, American-style lager beers. I've had really, really good Belgian quads and Belgian dark beers. I've had really, really good porters, really, really good stouts, and it doesn't matter. If it's good, then it, then it's good. Um, this is an Imperial IPA. I don't know anything about this peer, uh, about this beer. Arctic... Panzer, Arctic Panzer Wolf from Three Bloy, Three Floyds. So let's pull it up on Beer Advocate while that's loading. I'm going to take a drink of this. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's very IPA-ish. It's a sweeter IPA than I've ever had. Most IPAs are really densely hoppy. Um, this one doesn't kind of have that herbally aftertaste. It's got like a very, very sweet flavor to it. Mm. Mm. Arctic Panzer Wolf. 
have you just become my new favorite IPA? There's a couple IPAs I really, really like. Really, really like, obviously, Hetty Topper. Great. I mean, unbelievable IPA. Plenty of the Elder. Super good. Super good IPA. The Founders Centennial IPA, which Warmouse sent me a bottle of. Oh, that is my favorite IPA. This one. This one might be number two. This one might have just snuck into my number two spot. Arctic Panzer Wolf Imperial IPA. Um, on, whoops. On uh, Beer Advocate, it has a uh, world class 95 rating. Massive IPA that will leave your palate as a hapless victim. Scorched Earth is our brewery policy. Okay. Well, there you go, Three Floyds. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, let's see who has uh, reviewed this beer. On tap at Comic Cafe Store. Hoppy Aromas. Uh, tasty, very good hop blend right there in bitterness. Lots of malt. Peachy looking body. A little acidic after a few sips. Very enjoyable citrus, orange, and tropical fruit. Although I would most be pleased by better balance. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see that. It is it is very well balanced. I'm not sure how you would get better balance out of this. It is very well balanced. And it does have that nice upfront sweet-like tropical flavor to it. Um, thank you, Brian. I appreciate the Arctic Panzer Wolf. It's going to get consumed as the vlog continues. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. So moving forward... Um, just want to talk about a couple things I've been. Uh, well, let's just talk about this one thing I've been vaping on. I uh, I love uh, I love Mr. Twisted Messes. I think he is he is just a good dude. I watch his videos uh, religiously. He does shit with coils that I I can't do. And anyone that can do something that I can't do, I'm impressed by that. That's why I liked so much at the Oregon uh, Vape Festival. Not, I mean, judging the cloud competition was fine. Judging the trick competition was very, very cool. Uh, Mr. Fresh Skater J walked away with first place because he's crazy and he does crazy vape tricks. So if someone, I see someone like Fresh Skater J or Kylie Vapes blowing O's and doing a jellyfish and rings of Saturn and shit, I go, that's cool. That That is something I can't do and I think that is... Uh, I think that is cool. Um, not really sure where I was going with that statement. Twisted messes. That's right. He builds shit that I can't build. So I sent him my doge a long time ago. He built a, a parallel fused Clapton coil on it that I have managed to keep running this entire time on my doge. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Uh, this is become my go-to atomizer because of the coils on it. The doge itself is fine. I cut the airflow off about halfway. With it full open, it's just, eh, it's a little too airy for me. But if I close off the airflow holes about halfway, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. Um, this is some top secret juice, and it's on the Ambassador 26650 mod. Um, it's been a great vape. I've just been enjoying it. I imagine that the juice in here which I can't tell you about because I'm a jerk. And that's just the way it goes. This juice in here, wow, is going to pair amazing with this IPA, with this Imperial IPA. Think about a juice. What flavors would pair well with an intensely hoppy, citrusy, tropical Imperial IPA? Let's, uh, I want to do this together. Mmm. Mmm. That is a beautiful pairing. This is the best pairing I've ever done. And someday you can come back to this video when this juice is on the market and you can go, yeah, yeah. I did that same thing and it was good. But yeah, um, the reason I've been using this ambassador so much is uh, I want to give a shout out again to Select Vape. They sent me a little care package that had some batteries in it, an atomizer, a hobo. It had a Le Petit clone, which believe it or not, that's a, an actual mech mod which we'll get into later. Um, they sent me some uh, MXJO 26650 batteries. MXJO 26650 batteries. A couple of them. And I, uh, I realized the other day that I had all these freshly charged 26650 batteries and no mods to put them in. I have basically... I mean, the Red Horse is gone. I gave that away. The Fat Snow Wolf is gone. I gave that away. The Hades is gone. I gave that away. Uh, the Ruthless Bomber is in a box. The Brass Monkey is out and getting used. 
but I realized that I don't have a lot of 26650 mods, so I went back into the archives and I grabbed out uh, my ambassador, and I thought to myself, what's my... If I had to pick a 26650 mod to use, that I was going to use on a day-to-day -day basis, what would it be? And I was like, yeah, it'd be the Ambassador. Of course it would be the Ambassador. I'm a huge fan. I love the Ambassador. This is a 0 0.2 ohm build, I believe. 0 0.19 ohm build. I don't care. It just performs great with these MXJO batteries on this particular mod. It's good. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's really good. I'm going to set that there. So, I would like to do some shout outs. Um, the first shout out that I would like to do is to uh, someone we know, someone we should hopefully all know. Let me get to my four shout outs area. Uh, I want to give a very, very big shout out to Mr. Jonathan JT Vape Stars Thomas. He is the epitome of optimism in the vape community. Whenever I'm having a crummy day, and I've had a lot of crummy days lately, whenever I'm having a crummy day, or I'm in a foul mood, I, I visit JT's Instagram, I visit his YouTube. He's just such a positive guy that I feel, I feel like I'm a better person just from having known him. He is such a good guy. He's so positive. I'll post a link in the description to both his YouTube and his Instagram. He posts great stuff, and it's always very, very motivating and very, very positive. I've had the chance. Uh, I met him first at VaporCon West. We got to hang out a little bit at ECC, and I'm hoping that in 2015 our, our paths will cross again because he's such, such a good guy. I just like being around him. He's so, so positive. So JT Vape Stars consider yourself shouted out. He's such, uh, he's just such a good guy. Uh, he sent me an email um, back on New Year's that was, you know, and he sends me these random emails like, um, you know, hey bro, just seeing how you're doing. Hope everything's good. Talk to you later. Vape stars. And I'm like, fuck, that's, that's nice. That's, that's a nice thing to do. He doesn't want anything in return. He's not looking for a mech mod or asking why his pro tank is burning or asking for suggestions on juice he's just reaching out as a bro as a bro fist and saying hey what's up and i think i like that uh next shout out comes to me uh from a guy named paul he says in your next vlog can you please give my wife melissa a shout out and convince her to go to vapor slam go to vapor slam i want to go and she is on the fence about going mm. I started off watching your YouTube videos, and you are the one that got me to quit smoking. It's been one year and four months, congratulations, by the way, uh, since I had a cigarette, and convincing her to go to Vape Slam would be, uh, and convincing her to go, and that Vapor Slam would be a great time, and to meet a great vapors in the community. Thank you. Keep calm, vape on, Paul. Mr. Paul. Uh, this isn't directed at you. Congratulations, Paul, on your one year and four months. I think that's fan freaking tastic Melissa <laughs> Vapor Slam Winston Salem North Carolina it's going to be fun there's going to be a lot of people there there's going to be a lot of vendors there you will walk away with just free juice that's what happens vendors just give out juice and vendors just sell juice you can buy juice there you can buy mods there you can meet people you can take part in 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 the fun in the greatness that's going to be Vapor Slam I will be there, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. When is Vapor Slam? Did we already talk about Vapor Slam? I think we got. I think we talked about Vapor Slam in my uh, at the end of my last video. That's right, March twentieth and twenty-first, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, being put on by uh, the Mooch and uh, the Mooch One and Freeze from uh, the TVA Show podcast. Which, by the way, I was on the last episode of the TVA podcast, and I'll post a link to it in the description uh, if you want to listen to it. They had me on just for a little bit, just to talk about things, stuff, junk, what's going on, and Vapor Slam as well. But that, that is going to be a good meet. Uh, besides VaporCon West, which I'm biased because that was my event. Besides VaporCon West, Vape Mania 14 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina was my favorite meet just because of the people. I got to meet Mooch and Freeze. The Plumes of Hazard guys were there, and we just instantly became really good friends. I love the Plumes of Hazard guys. Um, I got to see some of my old friends. Josh from eLiquid Planet was there. Queen and NC was there. The Mad Vapes guys were there. Oh, it was a fun meet. And I have a feeling 
Mark my words, Vapor Slam is going to be a great, great meet. So Melissa, please, you just need to, you just need to go with your husband Paul, and get there, and uh, and and we'll hang out, and I'll buy you guys a beer. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Paul, there you go, Melissa. Uh, let's let's go to Vapor Slam. We'll all hang out. I'm gonna go way back to. Uh, I'm gonna go way back. Um, Oh, this is long. I'm going to read this one long email. Maybe maybe we'll only do, maybe this will wrap up the shout outs because this is a really old one. This was sent to me back in September from a guy named Michael. And he says, that vape epiphany moment you were speaking of, that was at the end of July. I had tried disposable e-cigs. I would tried the blue disposable, uh, tried the blue high-tech rechargeable pack that charges and has slots for vapor cartridges. Nothing worked enough. So I actually went on and off for a year. Then I went to rolling my own cigs with a machine to be cheap, but I knew I had to stop smoking. Eventually, I felt the effects every day. So finally, at the end of July, I got an Ego. That didn't do it, but I did like the Kanger T3S on it, but, I was, but it was not delivering enough bang. So I got a hold of an MVP2, and that was the day of my vape epiphany. We've all had this. We've all had this vape epiphany where you get that one really good first vape and you go, oh, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Just like this. Delicious. And if anybody's wondering, this drip tip uh, is now my favorite drip tip and it comes from uh, from Dot Mods. From uh, Dot Mod. Dotmod.com sells these uh, these great wideboard drip tips. I absolutely love them. F that is delicious. That was the day of my vape epiphany. Mmm, with a particular flavor, especially a special little juice. And it now, <laughs> and now looking back, it was not the best at all. But what I did know is it worked. And then I went to a mech mod. Yep, with the Addies and Learned Coils. And was choking. Then I finally got the issue solved and bammo. Became instant vape advocate and lover. Spent most of my time watching guys like you, Phil, and Rip Trippers. uh, To just everyone. Soaking up all the info. People like you, my man... (laughs) <laughs> helped me get my crap straight so that I could have my vape epiphany. And now if it would give I and now if you give me some contact info, I know a local e-juice maker whose line is exploding demonic vapes. I know John and he won flavor of the month first and second place in June, I think. Uh, and tried for a third. He just released two new flavors, one specifically seemingly designed for variable voltage, variable wattage mods. As a thank you, I would love to send you a bottle, even to just enjoy. Uh, you don't have to review it. I am no way affiliated. However, if you did happen to like it, I would like to say, hey, toss in a shout out and mention it. Uh, maybe if that's cool. Anyway, thanks, Nick. Also on September 30th is my 40th birthday. I mailed you a quick thing a while ago, and if you can mention it, maybe shout out to all my kids, all five of them. Uh, Ashley, Satora, Kyra, Sarah, and Michael Thomas. Uh, And part of why I went to vaping and got all these tips from all the vids is to extend my life so I can be around them for longer. Sorry for the long email. I know you're catching up. So sorry, I figured I would toss it in the mix whenever, ahead of time. Uh, Sincerely, Michael. Yes, absolutely, Michael. That was a long email. I'm glad you have your vape epiphany. I I remember my vape epiphany. It's when I got a, uh, it's when I got that first DSE. No, it wasn't the 901. It was my 510. When I got the Yeti, the 510, and you can go back in my YouTube archives and see my vape epiphany happen, that 510, I just loved it so much. Uh, I fully credit it with being the device that got me away from tobacco. Uh, I, I, when I had the 901 and when I had like the Smoke 51, I kind of was like, Ugh, like I kind of still really ugh, want a cigarette really bad. Ugh. Um, but when I got the 510, I've never felt so satisfied vaping as I did with that first 510 
little stick battery, little 510 atomizer. I was stuffing the carts with, uh, with pyramid tea bags. And that was how I vaped. Um, absolutely, I remember my vape epiphany. Do you remember your vape epiphany? Because Michael remembers his vape epiphany. So yes, consider yourself shouted out, sir. I appreciate that. Um, so moving on, we're about 20 minutes in. Uh, let's get to some first impressions real fast. What up, Arctic Panzer Wolf? You are good. So like I said, I was up in uh, I was up in uh, Oregon at the Eugene, Oregon uh, Vapors Vape Festival. And uh, I met a lot of really cool people, tried some very, very delish, delicious juices. And one of those juices was from uh, Zephyr Vapors. Sent me, or he gave me the, uh, the Cool Blue Raz juice. Quite delicious. Uh, he also, and he doesn't sell these, but he gave me one of the billow tanks that he was tasting the juices with. He had these juices set up in the billow tanks, and when I first vaped it, I was like, wow, that tastes really good. And then I was kind of like double blown away. I was like, wow, that juice is really good. Wow, that vape is really good. What tank is that? Ugh, pardon me. Robin, do you know what tank it was? Sorry, Sheik. It was the billow tank, and nobody there was selling a billow tank, and I was so bummed out. I was like, I have to buy one of these. I have to buy a billow tank. I just do. No one there was selling a billow tank, so on the last day, he walked over, and he just gave me one of the testers. He's like, here, here, I have a billow tank. They're only 35 bucks. Just have one. And I was like, I, I think that's great. Thank you so much. So Zephyr Vapors gave me a billow tank. Uh, I bought a vaping militia vape band for it. And while I was up there, I purchased a Segeli 150 watt in silver. This has been, oh, just an amazing combination. I, uh, I got home, I rebuilt the billow tank. Um, I took it apart for traveling and I, I fucked up the coils that were in there. So I came home and I rebuilt it, came out to 0 0.4 ohms and I wicked it like I wick the orchid. I just have the cotton just above the juice flow channels. You'll see when you get in there that there's some juice flow channels that go up. I have the cotton just sitting just above those. So when you take that hard drag, it pulls juice up and re-wets re -wets your cotton. The performance has just been fantastic. The flavor is great. I mean, really, really, really great flavor. Um, it's 0 0.4 ohms. I've been rocking it at around 4 volts, which is uh, about 37 watts, 36.9 watts on the Segeli 150. Um, I just wanted a 150, and it's because of fucking Cameron. Cameron worked at Emerald Vapors, and we were all hanging out before the event started, and he's like, oh, check this out. I got a Segeli 150, and I held it, and I touched it, and it comes with this silicone sleeve, which just slides on here and has cutouts for your buttons. Oh, and it just it feels great and nice and solid, and I was so jealous. I'm like... That is super cool. And so Aspire was there, and they were wholesaling Segeli stuff. So I bought a Segeli 150 watt, uh, 120 bucks retail. I got a little bit of a discount. I only paid $85 for it, but I still purchased one. And so far, I've been uh, I've been really enjoying it. I really liked the original Segeli 100 watt. Okay, uh, I got a 100 watt plus in the mail while I was gone. And then I bought a 150 watt, and it, they come with the same silicone uh, silicone sleeve that just slides on. This one's black. The 100 watt plus has the swooshes. The 150 watt does not have any swooshes, and they are the exact identical, same size uh, in every way. This one goes to 150. This one goes to 100. Other than that, and the swooshes. There's not a lot of difference. Um, the button on the 150 watt is flat, where the button on the 100 plus is rounded. I'm gonna have a video coming up featuring both of these mods. Um, Segeli's crazy, they're out of their mind. They did the 100 watt, then the 100 watt plus, 
than the 150 watt than the 150 watt plus. I don't know the differences between all of them and it's really, really confusing. But I'm gonna describe and talk about what I have here and what I like and dislike about them. On top of the 100 watt is uh, the Doge version two that I got from Grand Vapor Station. Uh, might need some more juice. This is also a juice that I got at the Oregon Vape Festival from, uh, oh, what was the name of that company? What was the name of them? I'm getting juice all over the place. What was the name of the company? Source Code. Source Code Wanna Cookie. It's called Wanna Cookie, and it's kind of like a custardy cookie flavor. So, if we're going to talk about the Doge version 2 for a sec, if I may, if I might. Um, got it right now on the Segeli 100 Watt Plus, okay? Skelly 100 watt plus and the 150 both have spring loaded 510 pins. So everything sits flush on there. The Doge has an incredibly long center post, fits on there just fine. I currently have this at, uh, oh, I get to peel off the plastic. Oh, oh, what up are oddly satisfying. The plastic over the screen, I can't believe I get to pull this off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Beautiful. God, I love doing that. It's 0.3 ohms, 4.4 volts, 63 watts. Um, the flavor is surprisingly good, and you have to use the the, the, the the chuff style cap that the Doge version 2 comes with. See, there's the Doge, and he's got two. You have to use that cap. Do you see those, those center posts, those building posts in there? You can't use a chuff on here because those center posts stick up past the rim of the atomizer. And this goes on top, and I've been leaving it wide open, which is surprising. That's a lot of airflow. But what happens is because that is so big, I end up getting a little bit of juice in my mouth, which I'm not really super complaining because this wanna cookie is nice, but I end up getting juice in my mouth. I wish that I could have the option to put a normal top cap and drip tip on here, and I wish that I had the option to use a normal chuff top because they are a touch bit smaller Oh, that's right, I have to close it off the other way. They're a touch bit smaller around than uh, than the Doge. But thank you, Grand Vapor Station, for that Doge. I'm going to put it through its paces and uh, get back to you. Segeli 150 watt, talked about that. Billow tank, digging it so far. We'll come back to that later after I've spent some more time with it in the real world. But it's fantastic. So my last first impression, this is running long now. <laughs> my last first impression is this. This just arrived literally today. I haven't even taken a toot on it. This is the iStick 30 watt. iStick 30 watt? This goes to 30 watts. So let me take off this tank, which also came in the mail today. Let me show you the top. Do you see how it has this extra sort of fin on it now? That's so nothing hangs over. That's 22 millimeters around right there. So if you put an RDA or a tank like this on there, then it's gonna sit, and it's gonna sit, oh, right there, right at the edge. Fuck, that looks cool. So this came from Joy Tech for some reason. Um, this tank also came from Joy Tech, and I don't know anything about this tank. I saw that Matt from Suck My Mod just posted a picture on Instagram. This is the instructions they sent me. If anybody can translate really quickly, that would be fantastic. I don't know anything about this tank. Uh, it says E-Leaf Mellow on it. So I'm assuming it's the Mellow tank from E-Leaf. Uh, it comes with an Atlantis style head. 
I double checked the Atlantis heads fit in here, although I don't have one in here right now. Further science is required. I'm going to put an Atlantis head in here and see how it works. I picked up a five pack from Aspire while I was in Oregon. I'm gonna see how they work. I'm nervous. Uh, let's, uh, let's set the wattage up. And I know that by pressing the button three times now that you can, uh, you can change it from voltage to wattage mode. Thank you every, all 600 of you that commented on that video. Uh, I'm gonna turn this down to like 26 watts. Okay, sounds like it's juicy. Let's see how it goes. Oh, vape life. Blue. I just filled this up. This is the first time I've tasted this vape life blue juice. Oh, it's good. That's nice. Uh, I'm gonna turn this up. I get some really good chocolate flavor from this juice. Turn this up to 30 watts. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my God. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, the batteries are in the... You hear the buttons rattling? Buttons still rattle, but it's 30 watts. Um, Let's, uh, I'm going to check out real fast. Uh, I, uh, e leaf, I stick 30 watt. I believe it has a bigger battery in it as well. Um, let's just go to the I leaf, e leaf website. Uh, ego threading connector. Uh, 2,200 milliamp hour. 2,200 milliamp hour? This iStick 30 watt is winning me over uh, again and again. That tank is rad. This is going to be a great stealth vape for me, even though, I mean, it's not... It's not designed for stealth vaping, as you can see, because of the clouds, bro. But palmable put it in your hand put it in your pocket if i ever go to disneyland sure i'm gonna take this wow that's great that is a great vape that tank is great it's a lot like the nautilus or the atlantis except it has uh more airflow options so the atlantis by aspire has one single slot right there for it. This, and if we're gonna look at big tanks, let's look at the Kanger sub tank, that has three holes right there, but that's all you get, you get three holes. This has three holes on that side, three holes on that side, and it's adjustable. So you can spin it around very smoothly to two holes on each side, feels nice can spin it around okay so you get three holes three holes on both sides three holes on both sides three holes on both sides okay so there's only a three hole option but what you can do is you can take it down to ooh, one hole on each side I wonder if I could traditionally vape this Try to cut that air off just a little bit. You could kind of traditionally vape that too. I'm gonna to leave it wide open, three holes on each side. This is fucking awesome. That is cool, that is super cool. Obviously, I will report back with how all of these things perform. The Doge, the Sigelis, the uh, the Billow, and the new uh, Mystery E-Leaf uh, tank, the Mellow. <laughs> the Mellow. Um, not sure of the capacity on this. It's kind of bumming me out that I don't know the capacity of it. It's got a spring-loaded center connection. Uh, it's 23 millimeters around. Oh, I guess. It looks like 22 millimeters to me, but I can't gauge millimeters with my eyeballs. Charge it via USB. 
Atomizer, mellow atomizer, here it is. Here it is, mellow. Uh, 0.5 ohm coils, it's made with organic cotton on the inside. Uh, 63 millimeters tall, 0 0.5, 20 to 30 watts, and it's environmentally healthy. Improved airflow control. Uh, thread connection of the atomizer, match the end of the how to add liquid, how much liquid does it hold? Miss, Mr. I stick, Mr. E leaf, doesn't say. Wow, doesn't say how much liquid it holds. I'm guessing it's like three mils. Does that look like a three mil tank? Great, having a great vape. All right, so did some shout outs. We talked about beer, Arctic, Panzer Wolf. We did some first impressions. Right now, what I want to do is retro vape. Mm. All right, so we are going to retro vape right now. Um, what I'm going to do is grab an atomizer. I still have some of these atomizers. This is a low resistance atomizer in here. Um, like, like I always say, once upon a time, this is all we had. This is all we had. Um, we didn't have variable voltage. We didn't have anything fancy um, until this little number came out. Oh, and I can't get this off of here. Uh, no matter. Let's just leave it as it is. This is, in actuality, the very first variable wattage device that ever existed, ever. Of course, it was Evolve's creation. We're going to talk a little bit about the Darwin. Do you see this right here? Uh, I'm going to go to the. Uh, I'm going to go to the page. Darwin by Evolve. Because Enhaler, rest in peace, Drew. Uh, Enhaler still has a, a page for the Darwin, which I'm going to link to, um, but I don't believe they're for sale uh, anymore at all. It just says out of stock. Once upon a time, this came out. It cost two hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Okay, let's just read through the specs real fast. Uh, this is before the advent of RDAs or RBAs or RTAs or anything rebuildable. We were all using cardamizers or regular low resistance atomizers. The Darwin's thumb wheel allows you to choose your designated wattage. So it has this thumb wheel right here that you roll up and down to see the wattage. So at its lowest, 5.1 volts or 5.1 watts. At its highest, 12.7 watts. That is silly. That is crazy. Um, and the 510 connection on here was flush. Okay, I have this adapter on here right now. That's a 510 to 510 adapter. And I can't for the life of me... Oh, there it is. There it goes. I got it off. That's what it looked like. Stock. That was your 510 right there. So you would put your atomizer on here. Just like that. And then to turn it off, you swiveled this down. And now it's off and won't fire. But when you flip it up, now it's on and it will fire. Ooh, there's my coils glowing red. Very good coil, China. And I just burned the shit out of that atomizer, but I'm still going to put some juice in there anyway. Now, I'm going to need a drip tip. And uh, the challenge of this is finding a drip tip that's gonna sit flush. I don't even have any like old school style drip tips. Eh, that one will work. That sits flush because you have a very limited amount of space to work with here. So you couldn't put a tank on here and then turn it off. If you rocked a tank on here, you had to use a 510 to 510 adapter and you had to leave it open. Sorry, sorry, Sheik. You had to leave it open all the time in order for it to work. But it had a variable wattage uh, up to 12.7 watts seems weird. But it was 12.7 watts. Charged via USB. Uh, it doesn't have the exact specs on here. It 
doesn't have, it just has backlit display. Okay, the Darwin does not require any batteries. It is a 1600 Ma internal battery and charged via USB. 1600 milliamp hour battery, 12.7 watts. This was, I can't stress this enough, this was the first variable wattage mod. The first variable wattage mod to ever exist in the vape world ever. Crazy, right? Crazy. The Darwin. Uh, what juice do I want to put in here? I have no idea. I'm going to grab some of this sloth sauce. Sure, why not? Three milligrams strawberry cranberry nilla custard. Two, three, four, five, six. Um, and when your atomizers leaked, which they did leak, um, you put... Uh, it would just drip out here and it would get all over your mod. Um, that's the reason why a lot of people started using the adapters because you could throw an adapter on here like this, 510 to 510, extend that out a little bit, extend that 510 connection out a little bit. Then you could put your atomizer on here and then you could put a drip shield on here. And some drip shields, you were able to close it. Some drip shields, you were not. You were not able to close it. Um, you could close it down about this far, which is off, but it would still be kind of up like that. I feel like I'm in a time machine, but I always say that. Let's put another drop in here, and let's uh, let's give it a little bit of a tilt, shall we? Um, I don't want to blow my face off, so I'm going to turn the wattage down. Let's go to 10 watts. So this is reading your ohms, it's reading your amps, it's reading your wattage, and it's reading your voltage. But the only way to see it is to press the button, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. So I'm going to see if I can read this real fast. So it's a 2.1 ohm coil, 4.8 volts, 10 watts, 2.2 amps. Ha ha ha! Yes, Darwin! Clouds, bro. Just clouds for days. Do you see how crazy, silly this thing looks? But the idea was that if you liked the way that 10 watts felt, that you could simply leave this device at 10 watts. And no matter what you put on there, it would adjust your voltage accordingly. So even if you put a 1.5 ohm atomizer on here, it would adjust your voltage down to give you that same vape experience. And if you put a 3 ohm atomizer on here, it would adjust your, watt, your voltage up so you could have that same 10 watt experience now we're into the hundreds of watts but this this was 10 watt vaping baby 10 watts i can hardly believe this this is crazy i i used to vape this like you couldn't imagine in fact i put it like that i put it always put it at an angle I can't believe it still works. Uh, it's uh, it's old school, man. This was the first variable wattage mod. This came out in 2011, I believe. When did I get this? When did I get my Darwin? Because I remember I did that Darwin versus uh, Darwin versus the Provary video. And this juice even tastes like an old juice I used to vape. It tastes like a vape meat. So the, the, the whole retro vaping thing is really coming full circle, even with the flavor of this juice. It is crazy. You can't do a lung hit with this at all. Okay. Well, maybe you can a little bit. But yeah, that was the Darwin. It was the first 
variable wattage mod to ever exist in the vaping world ever. It had a very, very high asking price, $258. You flipped it on, you flipped it off, you flipped it on, you adjusted your wattage with this little thumb wheel, which was very, very sensitive. Like even if I give it a slight little, uh, now we're already at 11 watts. It was just a tap and it was like, now we're at 11 watts. Which is better, actually. Unbelievable. We owe a lot to Darwin. Whether or not you like the DNA 30 or the DNA 40, we owe a lot. A lot to Evolve Vapor for creating. Not even in a roundabout way. Not even like, oh yeah, they did do that. No, they did do that. Purposefully invented variable wattage for vaping and we owe a lot a lot lot to evolve uh, so let's wrap this up let me take one more dude on the darwin this is good times so we've done beer we've done some first impressions we did some retro vaping uh, rather than jump into viewer mail i want to talk about a mech mod um Let's just do the review time graphic. <clears throat> so I talked a while ago on Facebook to a fellow named Jeremiah, and uh, uh, he works for uh, Alpha Artistry, and uh, they're the ones that sent that uh, Sovereign RDA, which I'm going to have a review for next week. We're going to talk about this little bad boy right here, which I actually... I actually enjoy it. It's a little weird, but I actually enjoy it. But they also sent along this copper mech mod called the Valiant. Same company makes this particular mech mod right here. Can you see how grungy this is? You'll notice how grungy it is when I take it apart and you see the sleeve, you see the threads. Do you see how shiny the threads are? That's how it looked when I first got it, and I've used it obviously a little bit, and it's just got grungy as all hell. Um, there's a couple upsides to this particular mod. The machining on it is quite nice. You can't really see any separation where the different segments are, but there's a segment up here. You can see that separating right there. There's also a segment right there that you can see separating right there. But when it's all together, that line goes away that line goes away, and it's a uh, it's a very sleek looking mech mod. Uh, the button, the button is okay. I'm not a huge fan of this button. It does have a locking feature on it, this little ring right here, which again I haven't got stuck in the up or down position, but it's got big nubbly bits on it so that you can uh, you can really grab it and 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 lock it down. Unlock it, press the button, lock it. Can't press the button. Um, the button isn't fantastic. If you hit it right in the center, it still is even a little bit crunchy. But even if you're just off a little bit, it's a very crunchy. It's a very crunchy button. At least my button is crunchy. Now again, I don't know if all of them are like this, but my button, my button is crunchy. Uh, one thing that I do like about it is it's not exactly self-adjusting, but it's kind of, it's kind of self-adjusting. Now, I haven't taken apart this switch, but if I were to take an atomizer, let's take this Vulcan atomizer. Let's screw it on here. Let's get a battery. Get a little MXJO 18650 action, courtesy of Select Vape. Now this has a floating center pin, which means the center pin just kind of, see how it's pulled all the, uh, you can't see that, it's pulled all the way out, it just floats kind of back and forth like that. Now this is a closed sort of system on the switch, which is weird, but this connection on the bottom is spring-loaded. Do you see how it's like spring-loaded right there? This part. This part is spring-loaded. Now, I don't know. No, I can't unscrew this. That's right. I tried doing that. 
I don't know if there's a way to get into this switch. Oh, there is. <gasps> oh god, I should not have done that. Fuck! Magnets, bro. Fucking magnets. How do they work? So here's... <laughs> Here's your spring-loaded bit in there. This comes out, and then you have opposing magnets right there. Opposing, opposing magnets, which, damn it, I should not have taken that apart. But what are you going to do? So I'm going to do my best to put this back together. Fuck, those are strong magnets. God damn it. Oh, I hate that. I should not have taken this apart. These magnets just fucking fly at each other. Fly at each other. Ha! You have to do it quick. You gotta be quick. So now that I got the switch all together, opposing magnet, opposing magnet. So what's actually making a connection is two magnets. The two magnets are touching. And I noticed that this mod doesn't hit super hard. I mean, it hits okay, but I notice substantial voltage drop. I don't know what I don't know what this is rated at. Um, it is segmented, so look, segment there, segment there. And that's it. I have this upside down. So you can use smaller batteries, you can use different size batteries, but really with a mech and you're going, you know, with low ohms, you want to rock a uh, you want to rock, uh, you know, a low ohm build. You're going to need an 18650 in there. So that's the bottom screwed on. Why are you not firing? Okay. Nope, that's screwed on all the way, and now I'm just getting juice everywhere. Okay, let me take my atomizer off. There's no battery rattle. See, this is the problem that I had with it. Nope, that's floating, so that should have pushed that down. There's a tiny, oh, it's a tiny little screw in there. In fact, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to get up close and personal with you here. I apologize, but there is a tiny, tiny little screw. Do you see that tiny, tiny little screw right there? I'm, and this is the part that floats. So when you put your atomizer on here, it's going to push that up. See how that's see how that's pushed up a little bit now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to adjust. I'm going to try to adjust this screw out just a little bit. Oh, I hate fiddling with mech mods. God damn it! If there's one pet peeve I have in the world, it's fiddling with freaking mech mods. Ah, firing, firing, success. So I had to adjust that little pin out a little bit, and now it's uh, and now it's gonna fire. I don't know. It hits well. I don't like how grungy it became, and because it's a copper mod, it stinks like you can't imagine. Um, one thing that I do enjoy is when you take off the button, because of those magnets in there, uh, your battery stays uh, stuck to your switch just ever so slightly see how the switch is stuck to the battery just uh i don't know it cool it makes it feel uh very all sturdy and solid um i don't know how much this mod goes for i should have looked into that let's go over to alpha artistry because that uh that will be the ultimate decider on on this mod is how much it costs but it is hitting surprisingly well nope that's the sovereign nope that's the sovereign let's go to their facebook that's the sovereign can't find anything but the sovereign they're really pushing that sovereign i can't tell how much this mod costs um the sovereign rebuildable atomizer is a hundred dollars so i'm assuming the mod is going to be uh is going to be much more um it's not a terrible mod i've just found myself skipping it a lot and there's no real reason for that 
other than I have mech mods that I like better than this one. Um, it's not a horrible mod at all, but yeah, it is what it is. It's the Valiant. Uh, I am going to end up giving this away um, to, I guess, someone who just needs a good mech mod. Not bad, not terrible. I just uh, I can't stand copper mech mods, and that's the way that uh, that's the way it is. And this is just a copper mech mod. I wish it was a little bit more. You know, I hate. It's we're going into 2015 here. There's got to be better ways to adjust for battery rattle in mech mods. Things like the ambassador adjust automatically. There's nothing to fiddle with. You just put a battery in and put an atomizer on, and then you vape it. With this one, there's a little bit of fiddling involved. There's a little bit of pin adjusting. There's a little bit of fiddling involved. You saw when I first put this together, it didn't fire, and I had to adjust that pin out for it to fire. Magnetic switch. Let's see how magnetic it is. Nope, it's not like a. No, nope, it's not like a uh, an Amerivate mod that just sticks to things. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I am going to end up giving this away. So if anybody has any good ideas or if anybody just really, really wants a mech mod, um, I guess you can shoot me an email. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but that's what I got. It's the uh, it's the Valiant from Alpha Industry, Alpha Artistry. I'll post a link in the description to their Facebook if you're so interested. Um, shit, 20, 30, 40. This is, uh, this is getting a little bit long. Don't have any time for viewer mail. This Valiant just got so dirty. It just got so dirty. It just got so... I mean, the, you, the camera can't see it. Whoever gets this mod from me, you will see how dirty it got. And it is a dirty, dirty mod. I don't like looking at gross, dirty, dirty things. And this just looks dirty. I'm sure you could clean it up with some uh, with some Brasso and the like and get it all nice and shiny again. Um, it's just dirty. It's just dirty. It's not a bad mod. It's just dirty. That's what I got. Um, so yeah, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap up this here vlog. Let me have some more Arctic Panzer Wolf. Thank you, Brian. But yeah, a lot of stuff coming up. Um, it's a lot of mech mods and a lot of rebuildables. Like I said, I did get those Sigillis and I did just get the iStick uh, 30 watt, which has been fantastic. I'm going to be using the crap out of that thing. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, I appreciate everyone kind of sticking with me and supporting me through this weird, obscure, transitional phase. Um, this is going to be where I am for a while. Um, kind of looking at different places already uh, uh, down here in Southern California. But uh, I'm looking forward to going to some meets. I'm looking forward to going to some national meets as well as local meets. A um, lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to get back into the double feature vlog schedule very, very soon. But I appreciate all your support. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Ah! Damn it, Vulcan.